last day. Um, yeah. Father Jazz rate 124. Um, wasn't beating a million miles behind that, and like you say, I just I think this this sort of ground, this sort of track is is going to suit him um, ideally. So um, I would like to think I'd be disappointed if he didn't give the favourite something to think about anyway. Yeah, because that horse that beat him at um, at entry is quite a good flat horse, a superior flat horse to him. Uh, it was pretty good, pretty good run for him. It was his best run over, over hurdles anyway. That's for sure. When he was last in on the flat, he was a winner at Windsor. So I'd, I'd agree with you. He should give the favourite something to think about. But favourite sets a. a Pretty lofty standard in a modest contest, don't you think? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, um, you also got to be be have a look at um, Pam Slide's runners. She mm -hmm. does really, really well when she goes to market raising. I'd love to know her statistics, but yeah. she does very, very well when she sends runners to market raising as well. So, of ten stone nine, Paula Bryan's had a great had a great season. You stay, you know, stable jockey to Harry, Harry Durham and. Uh, He's all guns blazing at the moment, and uh, mm. they're a great combination to two of them as well. Whenever they hook up with each other, yeah, yeah they got uh, Pam's got Ikendale Lady in it. Moonlit Warriors a first time over hurdles as well for the uh, the David Platt team running for the first time for uh, David. Quite a strong stayer on the flat it was a Lingfield winner over thirteen furlongs. So um, it's an interesting recruit to the, to the hurdling game. Right, let's go uh, back to Peter. There's the betting odds on favourite in the first. Peter, a final word with you. Yeah, and what Daryl was saying was interesting, wasn't it, Angus, about Eichendale Lady. Pam Sly does well here, doesn't she, the Queen of the Fence? She sent a good horse, Eileen Dover, who did well in uh, bumpers here at Market Raising in recent years. This one's by Milan and nibbled out at fair prices there. Hard to make a case for too many. It's a typical maiden at this time of year. But going up in trip, this odds on favourite GP, Doff Meal, going to take all the beating. Would have got closer at Cartmel, but for being hampered, when not finish second last time out. But as you've already said, guys, uh, that 89-rated animal, Gaius, ran behind a good horse. Horse, father of Jazz at entry, but in about six and a bit lengths that day, that was a cracking good effort. A Moonlit Warrior, remember, that could turn out to be a decent buy for value racing at 43,000 guineas, but it might just need further after today. Might find this a bit sharp on this good ground. It's officially good, but you get the feeling it's drying good, and there's a cool breeze as well here, drying the ground out in sunshine. First run for David Pipe today, ex Michael Bell, hurdling debutant, that's Moonlit Warrior, but it's uh, for me got to be this odds on favourite, even though Daryl does say quite rightly that Gaius should be giving the favourite something to think about, given that he was good on the flat. And uh, that was a good run at entry. But uh, it looks clear-cut for GP Doff Meal on paper. But they don't run them on paper, as we often say. Let's head up to the commentary box. And it's a warm welcome to Tim Peters. Hi, Hi Peter. Good afternoon, everybody. Flag is up for the opener. So runners now being called in. Flag is up. Gaius leading them in. Be interesting to see if uh, GP Doff Meal will be ridden handily. Those two are leading the other five into the start. And that's it. They're off and racing for the daily charged up offers at Rhino Dock Bet Maiden Hurdle. Two miles, two and a half furlongs. Just shy of two circuits heading towards the first flight. And it is Gaius who leads from GP Doff Meal in second place. Gaius almost pulling up at the first flight there. And as a result, there was a Constantina effect. A few of them are really slow over that with Moonlit Warrior towards the inside. GP Doff Meal is out wider. Thankfully, they all got over that flight OK. Mops a legend out a little bit wider and just getting a bit closer as they now head towards the second flight of hurdles. Let's see how Gaius takes this one. Was out jumped there by Mops a legend who's now come to the front. Gaius has now been reined back, passed by GP Doff Meal in the pink jacket towards the inside. A bit keen out wider is Gokran in the green and black colours. First start over uh, hurdles for this one and under rules as well. The yellow sleeves up there is Akendal Lady. She's having her first start under Paul O'Brien and she's uh, just tucking in behind the white face of Gaius. Towards the inside is Moonlit Warrior, a three-time winner on the flats and the bat marker Smart Connection and Alison Clark. So they've cleared the first three flights, and they head out of the back straight, and Mopsa Legend is in the lead. Gaius is into second place up on the outside of GP Doff Meal, who's got the rail, then a couple of lengths back to Akendal Lady in fourth position in those yellow sleeves, then comes Moonlit Warrior, held up in fifth position, then comes Gokran in the green and black colours, and Smart Connection and Alison Clark brings up the rear, as they head down the home straight, two flights down this part of the track, and the back two just getting a little bit detached. Mops a legend, Charlie Hammond has the lead then from Gaius, Sean Bowen in second place, then comes GP Doff Meal and Joe Williamson as they clear the first down the home straight, and then over in fourth place, Akendal Lady, then towards the far side, Moonlit Warrior and Jack Shooter as they clear flight number five. 
A little bit slow over that was Moonlit Warrior, and as a result has been stoked up on landing, was passed by Gokran, it was much quicker. And then at the back of the field is Smart Connections. So they've got a circuit to go, and this daily charged up offers at rhino.bet's maiden hurdle. Mopsa Legend has the lead from Gaius in second place, GP Doff Meal in third place. Second start for Phil Kirby today, having run a good second at Cartmel last time. Aikendal Lady is next around the bend. Then comes Gokran on the outside of Moonlit Warrior, who's just beginning to pick up the bits again, having just been off it, uh, passing the winning post. And about six lengths back to Smart Connection as they now race around the bend and head towards the back straight with five flights of hurdles left to jump. GP Doff Meal has come through on the inside now of Mopsa Legend, also against the rail Aikendal Lady. Gaius is out wider in the two-tone blue colours. Then comes Moonlit Warrior on the inside of Gokran as they take the first down the back straight. Again, Moonlit Warrior was a little bit slow over that, and Smart Connection is still some way off the back of them. So GP Doff Meal is in front by a couple of lengths now to Mopsa Legend in second place. Up on the inside is Aikendal Lady. Gaius with the big white face is out wider on the track as they take the middle flight down the far side. Then comes Moonlit Warrior on the inside, ridden along is Gokran and along that back to Smart Connection. Heading towards the final flight down the back, GP Doff Meal in front, heads towards it. Good jump by the leader, over in second, Mops the Legend getting closer, Gaius now. Moving into a share of second place. Under pressure, Aikendal Lady. Then comes Moonlit Warrior in behind. Being eased right off is Gokran, about to be pulled up. And Smart Connection is completely tailed off. And looks like that one might be calling it a day very soon as well. So out of the far side is GP Doff Meal in front from Gaius now. They've opened up from Mopsa Legend in third place. Then Aikendal Lady, followed by Moonlit Warrior in fifth position, trying to make some headway as they swing towards the home straight. GP Doff Meal in front, still travelling quite nicely. A couple of lengths cleared, now just being pushed along is Gaius in second place. Then Mopsa Legend, followed by Aikendal Lady, and then out slightly wider, trying to pick up his Moonlit Warrior. Making their way towards the final two flights. Inside the final three furlongs, GP Doff Meal still travelling quite smoothly in the lead. Gaius pushed along to try and stay in touch. Has got about two and a half lengths to find. Moonlit Warrior has moved into a modest third. Over two out then, and over it, it's GP Doff Meal in front from the ridden along Gaius. Again, Moonlit Warrior out to the right, followed by Mopsa Legend. The final flight, and over with a five-length advantage. GP Doff Meal just being shaken up now, six lengths in front. Gaius has got a furlong to try and close the gap. It's GP Doff Meal, though, in front by Four lengths. Gaius is continuing to try and stay on in second. GP Doff Meal just being pushed out towards the line, though. It's going to last out here. GP Doff Meal for Phil Kirby, the, the Don't Stop Us Now partnership, and Joe Williamson, a fairly comfortable winner. Gaius in second place, clear of Moonlit Warrior in third, and then came Mopsa Legends. Yeah, it was all straightforward, wasn't it, for GP Doff Meal in the end? The odds on favourite one, as the betting suggested, he might well. Uh, Gaius finishes in second, having been prominent. He slowed right into that first jump, though, didn't he? Almost surprised by it and uh, affected the odds on favourite, actually, and one or two others. Moonlit Warrior has run as connections were anticipating there, as though he needs a stiffer test. He's kept on into third, but no match for the front two. And yes, the second was closing a little on GP Doff Meal, but the winner was benefiting, really, from going up in trip and maybe just just idling a wee bit on the running. Uh, Mopsa Legend dropped away. Gohran had been too keen in the race. Smart Connection was always at the back. Eikendale Lady sat fourth early on, but dropped away there. Not much to take out of the race, really. Uh, it was a case of the winner almost landing this by default, um, being superior to the opposition. And Moonlit Warrior might be the one to take out for a little notebook entry uh, when stepping up in trip for the Value Racing Syndicate. But favourite backers off to um, a good start, but it's a short price angus what was the full sp yeah it was odds on favorite peter wasn't it uh, gp doff meal who was always um, handy and the shortest way around and has won very comfortably from a gas moonlit warrior a promising enough debut back in third place let's take it from three out uh, daryl jacob with me in the studio and i think the first thing to say daryl is we were talking about this is the two tracks at Market Resin, if you like, and the rail's out quite a long way, isn't it, making it more of a test? Yeah, it's a long way out. There's, it's a good run in there, uh, turn for home, and, and again, even from the from the last hurdle, it's a, it's a, it's a long, long run in. Um, you see, I guess, it was, it was slightly closing them down, but it was never, ever going to get on turns, but, um, you know, that's the difference between the two tracks. But the winner, um, Joe, just kept it very, very simple. He was on the best horse, um, and he kept it very, very simple, jumped, um, I thought... Uh, 
I thought he jumped very, very well, low, fast, quick. What do you want for a good summer jumper? That's what you need to be to be jumping there. And I just thought his jumping was probably better than all the rest of them. Gaius got a bit uh, slow over a few of them. But the, the interesting horse I liked was Moonlit Warrior um, coming around the home bend here now. was staying on probably the ground might have been a little bit too quick for him. But if you watch in a minute, the second last and the last, um, he pricks his ears, he has a look, and um, Jack obviously wasn't very hard on him, but I think there'll be a lot more to come from him in the future. He looks like a nice big horse that, you know, that will be definitely winning soon. Yeah, he's quite a nice run from him on, on debut, isn't it? And he stayed just shy of two miles on the flat, so he'd get he'd two and a half hour hurdles, would be all right, wouldn't it? Absolutely, I think so. And like you see him here, watch him coming down to going down to last. He just pricked his ears. He's jumped it nicely. Jack hasn't given him a hard ride. It was a lovely first education for the horse. But you know, like I say, going back to the winner, if you see him there, he was just very, very quick, very low over the first mm. two or the last two. Yeah, and we saw that what you mentioned at the beginning of the show that they do get racing coming down that hill. But it's um, a bit more of a test with this rail out as far as it is, isn't it? And. Um, we're surprised to see that. As far as I think, it's about 21 yards on the home bend, so it does make a does make a difference. Um, weak race, plenty of them. Uh, we're not going from a long way out. And there's your winner, odds on GP off meal under Joe Williamson to claim five off the back of this horse winning it pretty comfortably, really.